People really, really want to live forever. You can see evidence of this in just about everything around us. From the number of ads for anti-aging creams, the strangely odd ways our culture chooses to celebrate centenarians. Even Jeff Bezos wants in, allegedly putting his billions to good use trying to find a cure for... for mortality. Not malaria, but mortality. Because who wouldn't want to live forever in a world with next day prime delivery? This fascination, of course, isn't anything particularly new. There is plenty of evidence that our ancient ancestors were just as obsessed with aging as we are obsessed with it today. It tends to be one of the first things that humans think of once they have food on the table and have managed to build a roof over their heads. And honestly, it kind of makes sense. Aging is associated with ill health, a reduction in activity levels, as well as many age-related conditions. Conditions like heart disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, for example. It really makes sense that people would want to run away from these things and look for ways in which they can live longer and healthier lives. So, broadly speaking, there are two main theories in science right now which explain how and why we age. The rate of living theory and the free radical theory. More on them later, I promise. So you're probably already asking where does calorie restriction fit in all of this? And actually, it is pretty central to the discussion. In the past few years, there has been a robust amount of research which indicates that eating less or dramatically cutting down the number of calories you consume could lead to both a healthier and a longer life. This is known as calorie restriction. But what exactly do we mean by that? It absolutely does not mean starving yourself. Please don't starve yourself. This is not what this channel is about. <laughs> Nor does it mean depriving yourself of any essential nutrients. All it means is you're eating fewer calories, sometimes by up to 15 or even 30% than what is typical for someone like you. So today I'll be doing three things. I'll be summarizing all the research for you guys and I will then move on to explaining why eating less could potentially increase your lifespan. Right before I tell you why you should treat all this evidence with a healthy degree of caution, as you should everything in life to be honest. But before we begin I'd like to tell you a little bit about Dr. Tell Me Why. I started Dr. Tell Me Why with the goal of making medical scientific content engaging and accessible. And I thought the best place to do that would be right here on YouTube. So if what you're looking for is intelligent and down-to-earth medicine, with a few bad jokes here and there and some questionable silliness, then I recommend you subscribe. Basically, subscribe and I promise to enrich your life endlessly with my bad jokes, but also a great deal of knowledge, so I suppose it's okay, all is forgiven. So the story starts in 1935 when a scientist named Clive McKay made a startling discovery. He conducted a series of studies on rats and found the rats lived up to 33% longer when he severely restricted the calories they consumed. At the time, this seemed very counterintuitive. I mean, even today it seems counterintuitive, almost 100 years later. And to this very day, scientists are still trying to understand the connection between calorie or caloric restriction and lifespan. But one thing we know for sure through experiments on everything from rodents to roundworms and even monkeys is, yes, restricting the number of calories does indeed increase lifespan, making the animal live longer. The good stuff doesn't stop here, however. It also seems that restricting the number of calories you consume reduces the incidence of age-related diseases, diseases that you are more likely to get the older you are. Think things like cancer, heart disease, or even dementia, to name just a few. And personally, I find that observation even more intriguing because honestly, who wants to live forever if they're not well or healthy enough to enjoy those extra years? I mean, who wants to live forever full stop? I think I would get so incredibly bored. One study compared cells from rodents that had been fed a normal diet to rodents that had their calories severely limited and found that the hungry mice 
had 57% fewer age-related changes in their cells, despite the two groups of mice being exactly the same age. The hungry mice basically had younger, more youthful cells, cells that didn't show the typical signs of aging that you would expect to see for their age. Ah, beauty is pain. Well, at least hunger is. So what does all this mean for us humans? Well, humans have actually been studied too. The most prominent clinical trial being the calorie <laughs> trial where participants were divided into two groups and one group had their calories restricted by around 12% for a period of two years. At the end of the two years, the calorie restricted group had fewer risk factors for the same age-related disease as we mentioned earlier and their blood work showed reduced inflammatory factors. All that sounds very cool, but how does it work? How does eating less food make you live longer? I thought food was good for you, even essential. So remember the theories of aging that I mentioned earlier? I think it's time we talk about them. So our two main theories of aging are this, the rate of living theory and the free radical theory. And the rate of living theory is all about metabolism. Basically, the larger you are, the less energy you lose to your surroundings, and so the less energy you produce at rest, and the quieter and less active your life will be. This all equates to living a longer life, and it's why elephants and humans have longer, less exciting lives than rodents and roundworms. And the free radical damage theory is all about oxidative stress. Basically, the more you eat, the more toxic free radicals you will produce from the breakdown of that food, these radicals lead to increased inflammation and increased oxidative stress, leading to cellular atrophy and even cellular death as well as DNA changes. Who knew food could be so dangerous? Now you probably noticed that restricting your calorie intake actually fits in nicely with either theory. Eating less food typically results in a drop in your body weight and hence a drop in your resting metabolism. And some studies have shown that by eating less food, you could actually reduce your resting metabolism by up to 10%. Rate of living theory? Check. It also results in reduced sugar metabolism and hence reduced inflammation and oxidative stress, sometimes by up to 20%. Free radical theory? Check. It has been proposed that the real culprits are sugar and carbohydrates and that eating less of them allows the body to enter ketosis producing ketone bodies which are thought to help promote good brain health well into old age. A quick heads up by the way, I'm currently on the keto diet and will be posting a video about my experience on the keto diet as part of a new series I'll be doing called Human Lab Rat. So if you want to see that and want to see more Human Lab Rat videos in the future at some point, you should subscribe right now. But surely all this evidence means that we should all be cutting down our calories and eating less food so we could beat Jeff Bezos and uh, live as long as he will, or at least as long as the Queen of England, right? Well, you might want to exercise just a tiny bit of caution. Participants who took part in the calorie trial that I mentioned earlier were found to have lost 10% of their body weight over that two-year period. Which isn't exactly surprising because, I mean, if you eat less food and remain as active as you originally were, you should expect to lose some weight. However, this also makes it unclear whether the reduction in risk factors for age-related diseases was the result of the calorie restriction or the result of the weight loss, bearing in mind that most participants were overweight at the start of the study. I feel like this is almost like a chicken or an egg situation, like which came first? Moreover, calorie restriction was found to result in a slight decline in bone density, muscle mass, and aerobic capacity. Though combining the calorie restriction with regular exercise protected against these losses. So if you do plan on restricting your calories for whatever reason, then my advice to you would be to combine that with regular exercise. It's also really important to keep in mind that one diet that works for someone may not necessarily work for you. There are so many inter-individual differences between all of us that thinking that, you know, we can come up with a one-size-fits-all model is rather foolish. I mean, have you ever tried a one-size-fits-all item of clothing? They never fit. They never fit anyone. <laughs> so the bottom line is this, more work is needed, but the preliminary evidence seems very promising. 
I hope you guys had fun and managed to learn something new today. I hope it was a lot of food for thought, but not too much food. I don't want to shorten anyone's lifespan, of course. Why are my jokes so bad? <laughs> As always, thank you for making it to the very end with me today. If you like the video, then please do the only reasonable thing there is to do. Give it a like. If you love this video, however, and you want to see more stuff like it, then, you know, again, do the only reasonable thing to do. Subscribe. <laughs> I will miss you all so very much. Until next week, of course.